All right, let's get started with lesson seven, propagation of uncertainties. Now that we've addressed what random error is and how to express it or write it as plus or minus values, we can now get into how do we um, express random error when we multiply, add, subtract, or divide measurements in the chemical laboratory. Now, propagation of uncertainties is not always easy. And it takes some time to learn um, how to do this and practice it, all right? And honestly, it's not always that fun to do, but it's important. And um, so we're gonna take our time with this and show you how to do it, and then we'll practice it in class. So here we go. First of all, let's define two important terms, absolute uncertainty and percent uncertainty. Absolute uncertainty is more or less what the real random error is. So it's the random error, the plus or minus value, okay? Percent uncertainty is really taking the absolute uncertainty Dividing it by the measured value and then multiplying that by 100. All right, you get it in a percentage. So, for instance, if you have a uh, measured value of, say, like 2.0 grams plus or minus um, 0.1, the way to, this is this is the absolute uncertainty, all right? So plus or minus random error, absolute uncertainty. To change it into a percent uncertainty, we would simply take the absolute uncertainty, the 0.1, divide it by the measured value, which is 2.0, and then multiply it by 100 and that would give us the percent uncertainty, okay? So that's not that hard to do, to change the absolute uncertainty into a percent uncertainty, all right? Now, what we have to do at this point is when we take measured values and we add them or subtract them, we have to also deal with the random error. So let's look at an, uh, an example here. So a student took the temperature uh, measurements during an experiment. He found the initial and final temperatures, and these were basically the data that he found, the initial temperature in the experiment and the final temperature. So we have both the measurement and the measurement and the random error for both the initial and the final. All right, and what the problem is asking us to do is to find the change in temperature, okay? So in other words, the difference between the final and the initial temperature value. So to do that, we need to take the final temperature, which is um, 27.9 plus or minus 0 0.1 and subtract it from 20 that's 7, 20.1 plus or minus 0 0.1, okay? Now, so we'll do our regular subtraction, and we end up with 7.8, okay? So the change in temperature, so delta, change in T, the delta right there stands for change. So T, capital T, is temperature. So the change in temperature for this experiment is 7.8 degrees C. All right, now, we can't just leave it like this. We also have to determine the random error. So we have to have a plus or minus value of this temperature change. To do that, we're going to add the uncertainties, or add the 
absolute uncertainties. Okay, so if we add those together, we'll get 0 0.2, all right? And so that is our final answer unit-wise degree C. And so with the change in temperature then, we know not only the value of the change, but also the random error that's associated with the change in temperature. And so when we add or subtract, okay? So when we're doing adding or subtracting of two or more measurements, we always add, always add the absolute uncertainties. So adding and subtracting of measurements are pretty easy and straightforward. Just add the absolute uncertainties together and you got it, okay? Here's another one to consider. We're now delivering volume. and We wanna look at the change in volume from the initial, oops, the initial reading and the final reading. So to find the change in volume, we're going to take the final volume of 37.20 plus or minus 0 0.05 and subtract that from 15.05 plus or minus 0 0.05. Five. All right, so we do our normal subtraction and we find that we get 22.15. All right, and since we're subtracting there, we have we can only have two decimal points in our answer in this case. And now we need to find our um, random error. So all we're going to do is add again the absolute uncertainties. And so we get 0 0.1. Now we have to add a 0 to that because we need to remember that our random error, our last digit in the random error, needs to be the same place holder as our uncertain digit in our final measurement. So since our uncertain digit is in the hundredth position, our last digit in our random error also be in the hundredth position, okay? So again, we're subtracting. If we were adding, we always add the absolute uncertainties. Okay, now this is where it gets a little bit more complicated. And that is when we're dividing or multiplying measurements, okay? So here we have uh, a fairly complex problem. We have an equation where we've collected some data and in this data we have to take the mass we have to take what is known as the specific heat of a substance and the change in temperature of a substance and multiply those three values together to determine the amount of heat released now so to do this um, we need to plug our, basically, our measurements into this equation, all right? But we need to also think about how we're going to handle the random error. When we're multiplying or dividing, we just simply cannot ran, uh, add the random error up like we did with, like we did with subtraction and addition. Instead, what we have to do is change our absolute uncertainties into percent uncertainties first, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna take my mass reading and change that into a percent uncertainty. Remember, we take the absolute uncertainty, that plus or minus, we divide it by the measured value times 100. Right, and that is going to um, end up getting me 0.018%. It is a percentage, so I have to write it as a percentage. All right, now my specific heat does not have any random error. What that tells me is, is that we're gonna consider this an exact or true value um, 
instead of a measured value. So we don't have to worry about doing anything with that um, number. So we're in good shape there. Now the temperature change is found in the very first problem that we worked out for this lesson. And that was um, basically 7 point eight plus or minus zero point two that was the change in temperature um, that we discovered or calculated so now we're going to change this in a percentage percent error of taking our absolute uncertainty plus or minus dividing that by our measured value of seven point eight um, degrees C multiply it by a hundred and we end up getting a fairly large percentage of 2.6%. Okay. Now, what we have to do at this point is we have to plug our numbers into our equation. So we have to take our mass, which is 5.456 grams. And we're going to multiply it by our specific heat, which is 4.18. And then multiply it by the change in temperature, which is 7.8. Okay? When we multiply those values, we end up with a final value to the correct number of significant figures of 1.8 times 10 to the second. And it's going to be expressed, our answer, in joules um, due to when we cancel out units um, in this equation. So this is our final heat value released. But the question is, what is the random error for this? To do that, we need to take our 2% uncertainties that we just calculated and we need to add them together. So we need to add these two values together. When we add them together, we get a total of um, essentially, uh, well, 2.6 when it really comes down to it. 2.6% when we really round those up. So that means we can express a random error here as 2.6% in our final answer. And notice that the 6 is in the same placeholder as our last digit in our significant figures. So subtract, if so a multiplication division is a little bit more complicated in the fact that we're going to have to change all our measured values um, that, are, that express random error into percent error and then add the percent error together to express our final um, our final error and we can or final random error in our problem and you can just keep it into a percentage that's fine you don't have to go back to an absolute um, error at all all right let's look at our final one this one is a density problem now to solve for density um, density is found by taking the mass of an object divided by the volume of its object. So we have the mass of an object, which is 24 um, grams, and the volume is 2.0 cubic centimeters. The absolute random error is um, given to us, and since we're going to divide these two numbers, we have to find the percent error in order to um, get the correct random error. So I'm going to take my 0 0.5 plus or minus divided by the 24.0 and that will end up giving me a 2.1% um, plus or minus error and then we got our volume which is 0 0.1 divided by 2.0 times 100 I need to times that by 100, huh? Um, and that's going to equal a grand total of 5.0%. Now I have to have the zero there because of my last significant digit there. Okay?
So now when I take the 24.0 um, grams and I divide it by 2.0 cubic centimeters, I get an answer to the correct number of sig figs as 12 grams per cubic centimeter. All right, so my answer has to be 12 grams per cubic centimeter, plus or minus what? Well, I'm going to add these two percentages together. And when I add those two percentages together, I'm going to get 7% to the correct number of sig figs. So my answer should be 7% is my random error. And my last digits match in the same place, so we're good to go. All right, so that's basically how we do this, um, deal with random error. And this is called propagation of the uncertainties. And this is something that you're going to have to do in your lab reports. I know it seems like a pain. It is a pain, but it's something that you're going to just have to get used to doing. We'll practice this a lot in class. So if you don't fully understand this now, um, just, just kind of, Bear with, try to go through these problems another time um, to come to class with some questions that you might have over this, and then we will um, address those questions and practice and so forth, okay? So that is it for this particular lesson.